Baruch Hashem, it is day number 296 of our daily study of Ramam Sefer Mitzvahs. And in the three chapters a day study track of Mishnah Torah, we are continuing in Hilchas Malva Valeva, chapters 4, 5, and 6. Malva Valeva means the one who gives a loan and one who takes a loan, the creditor and the borrower. Okay, so to understand, we, have, we just have one mitzvah today, but to understand this mitzvah properly, we need context. Uh, the context is one of our mitzvahs from yesterday. If you remember, we had negative commandment 234 yesterday, which was the prohibition against acting like a creditor to a person that you loaned money to. And what does it mean, acting like a creditor? We explained. It means uh, pressuring them to pay the debt when they don't have it. And we explained that pressuring could even mean showing your face in front of this person. It might distress them. It might cause them anxiety. So, of course, you're allowed to collect a debt. But if the person doesn't have it, you basically have to steer clear so that they don't get nervous because they're going to feel bad. They can't pay it right now. All right. So that was negative 234. Today's mitzvah makes a distinction between Jew and non-Jew which tells us that that mitzvah of like literally running away from your debtor uh, if they can't pay you, that applies to a fellow Jew. So positive commandment 142 is that you do collect a loan from a non-Jew. Okay. So first of all, let me just say collecting a loan is a totally normal thing. I loan you money. Obviously, that's why it's called a loan. It's not a gift. It's a loan. I expect to be paid back. So the fact that we are told to collect the loan, that's just a normal thing. And the fact that yesterday we had the prohibition not to collect it from a fellow Jew when when they don't have the money, that's an unusual thing. That's a very strange thing. Like, how, how is business supposed to run if if I can't even go collect from people who uh, who owe me? So it's not such a weird thing to say that you should collect from somebody uh, if you if they owe you money. And even if they say, well, I don't have it. Well, I don't know. I can't, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, but maybe borrow from somebody else and pay me back. I mean, the, people do that all the time, right? Take a loan to pay a loan. But at any rate, it's, it, it's a normal thing to say, I'm collecting the loan when it's due. Okay. And of course, we're talking about when it's due. We're not talking about before it's due. All right. But still, it needs to be explained, why should it be a positive commandment? Meaning... I understand the prohibition, don't do that to a fellow Jew. But why does the Rambam say it's a positive commandment? Do go and attempt to collect the debt when it's due from a non-Jew. So I'll tell you a couple of explanations. One is from the Smag, the Sefer Mitzvah's Gadol, who says that the context is this is a Shemitah thing. Now, what's Shemitah? Do you remember way back in Sefer Zeroyim, the book of agricultural laws, we learned about the seventh year, the sabbatical year? So that's when the crops lie fallow um, and they become ownerless. There's this concept also called Shemitah Ksafim, which we learned about, but it was was many months ago, where loans are released. Okay. But here's the thing. Loans are released only um, by Jews because that's one of the 613 commandments that a Jew has, if if a Jewish person is a creditor, they have to drop the loans that are owed to them. But here's the thing. Let's say I borrowed money from a non-Jew and then I tell him, oh, I don't have to pay you back. Shemitah came and dropped the loans. No, no, no. The non-Jew doesn't have to lose out because of Shemitah. Shemitah is a mitzvah for Jewish people. Shemitah forces Jewish creditors to have to drop the the debts that are owed to them. It's not binding on the non-Jew. So if I owe money to a non-Jew and Shemitah comes along, I still have to pay the non-Jew. So the smog explains, just like I would still have to pay the non-Jew if he is the creditor, so too if the position is reversed and I'm the creditor, so I collect from him. Okay, so he explains it as a whole Shemitah thing. It still doesn't really completely explain why it's a mitzvah like you should do this. Thou shalt go collect from the non-Jew. So the Magid Mishnah, which is one of the primary commentaries on the Mishnah Torah, explains that it's not a positive commandment in that sense, meaning it, you're not forced to do it. If you want to not approach, if you know this guy, this non-Jew, doesn't have the money, and you're just 
you know what? I don't want to bother him. I'll just leave him alone. Whenever he has it, he'll come. He'll find me. You're allowed to do that. So then why does the Rambam phrase it that it's a positive commitment? You should go collect from the non-Jew. So the Magid Mishnah says it's not like that. There's something called a negative commandment that comes in the context of a positive commandment to make the observance of the negative negative commandment be like a positive commandment. And in fact, <laughs> I know that's very technical, but in fact, for that reason, <laughs> the Ramban, Nachmanides, does not include this mitzvah as one of his six, 613 commandments, because he says it's not even really a mitzvah. It's a corollary of the negative prohibition that we learned yesterday, not to collect from a Jew when they're not able. But it doesn't really mean there's an actual positive commandment that you must go collect from a non-Jew if they're not able to pay. It's an optional thing, and it's just a way of phrasing the negative prohibition as, as a positive commandment, so that you're performing a positive commandment when you're refraining from the negative commandment, if you understand that very technical explanation. Okay, at any rate, that is our mitzvah for today, and uh, we'll see you for more tomorrow, God willing.